Hey, Guy Powell here, and welcome to the next episode of The Backstory on Marketing and AI. If you haven't already done so, please visit ProRelevant.com and sign up for all of these episodes and podcasts. As you know, I am the author of the newly released book, The Post-COVID Marketing Machine, Prepare Your Team to Win. And you can find out more information on this at marketingmachine.prorelevant.com. You know, there is so much going on in marketing and AI and generative AI just exploded onto the scene in the beginning of the year. And today we've got an expert that's going to help us, AJ Amex, with uh, talking about the three keys to creating a highly engaged community with the advent of chat GPT and AI powered bots. So first, let me tell you a little bit about AJ. Uh, Anthony John Amex is a highly accomplished individual recognized as an Amazon best-selling author and ranked as the number two coach globally by HubSpot. In addition to these remarkable achievements, he serves as the brand manager for Social Glow. Uh, AJ's expertise in coaching and his remarkable literary success not only define his professional identity, but also underscore his commitment to personal growth and excellence. His work is vital to him as it enables him to inspire and empower individuals and organizations to thrive in the competitive world of business and marketing. Simultaneously, it contributes to his own personal and professional fulfillment. AJ, welcome. So good to have you today. Hi, I'm super excited to be here, man. I get to jam with another guy from the South, so uh, we're going to have a good time together. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so, well, I'm a transplant to the South. I grew up in New Jersey, but uh, I think I have been forgiven since I've been uh, here in Atlanta for the last 30 or so years. <laughs> I, where I come from here in Texas, uh, I just welcome everybody. You know, if you want to come, you're, you know, you're just come. It's all good. Welcome. I'm ready. I'm ready. What are you serving for dinner tonight? <laughs> uh, today, I think we're just actually going to go completely against Southern food. And we're actually going to have some type of like, um, what is it called? Zucchini lasagna. My wife and I, we usually eat um, pretty healthy, nutritious food. But I am not against some fried chicken or some All right. chicken and some biscuits and gravy. I'll get down with it. All right. I'm there for that. So, uh, well, anyway, so tell us uh, a little bit about uh, your backstory in marketing. How did you get involved in marketing? Man, I've um, I got involved in marketing actually in university. I was actually an art student, um, but I was actually doing music um, professionally even in college. And so one of my dreams at that point in time was, of course, to be a rock star. Who in college, you know, as a guy, you don't want to be a rock star, right? And so we had been writing music in high school. My best friend was my roommate um, in college. We continued writing music. We actually uh, were pretty talented. Uh, he was an amazing songwriter. And in my sophomore year of college, I was like, I, I really think we can. Um, do this as a career. And so fast forward from out of college or from college out of college by 2009, we had offers from two record labels. We had a 38 foot tour bus. Um, we had radio play here in the Dallas market. And so we're this independent band and I was writing music with the guys. I was performing music with the guys, but I was also doing all of the music business stuff. I just, I picked up a book, a music business book in, two, in my sophomore year of college. It's my very first nonfiction book I had read up, up to that point. I hated reading. And uh, I loved learning like, oh, I can actually learn a skill set to turn around and apply that and achieve results in, in, in the world. And so that completely changed my life. And so I was doing the marketing for the band. I was doing the logistics, the everything that a manager was doing, I was doing. And that's ultimately what got me into the whole world of marketing, um, which I learned was just a way to build relationships with people and to get a message out into the world. And so fast forward, once that came crumbling down in October of 2009, so when we played our last radio show, I was like, what do I do differently? And so since I loved marketing at that point in time, this would have been again, 2009, but if we back up 2008, I was seeing uh, the multi-level marketing space, Mike Dillard, Jonathan Budd, and I was not interested in the multi-level marketing space by any means, nothing wrong with it, just not my jam. But I was really interested to see how these people were using social media marketing at this point in time. And again, this is 2008. And they were using it to generate leads, get out a message to the world, and grow a business where they could work from anywhere in the world using a laptop. And this, to me, was very inspiring. And so I was like, I want to be able to do this. I want to be able to create a business where I can work from anywhere in the world 
um, just with a laptop and a Wi-Fi connection. And that's ultimately what kind of led me into this whole digital marketing game because I saw it kind of like, it's like a stage, <laughs> like, like the internet and social media gives every single person on the, on the face of the earth a stage, just like we have to, you know, we used to go do um, in music where we would create our own stage or we go play on other people's stages. And so that's kind of how I've gotten into social media marketing, digital marketing. Um, since then, I have, you know, been behind the scenes helping experts um, run launches, generate millions of dollars um, through their launches, and then kind of been behind the scenes coaching them um, on growing their business. I've coached all kinds of people from those who are starting out to people running multi-million dollar so uh, software companies. And so, uh, yeah, it's kind of how I've gotten into this whole marketing game. Wow, what a great story. And, uh, you know, and that's, uh, that's exactly what, uh, what makes sense to, uh, you know, to drive a business and then certainly yours as well. And I love the more I love the uh, the music angle. Uh, so do you, are you still playing music? Or are you uh, doing very much in that? Or is it kind of well, uh, now past? I haven't played. Uh, it's not past. There's an inkling in me. Uh, <laughs> at some point in time, there will be a, another show. Um, God willing, we'll create like some type of concert of the soul. It will be some type of transformational um, experience. I can I can feel it. I just don't know the time of it. And I yep. feel that will unfold in its due course. Uh, yeah, I, I know it. Doing it professionally. Yeah, I know what you mean. I uh, I I I was uh, played sax uh, when I was in high school and college, and and then for a while after that, and uh, and then probably about ten years ago, I finally gave up and I sold my sax. So. I'm now out of the music game, so to okay, speak. Okay. So in fact, you can see my amp. It's it's right. Yeah, here. yeah. Well, obviously, though, you read quite a bit there. You've got quite a few books on your bookshelf, or yes, or yes. is that a fake background there? No, nope, this, this is a real background. Uh, I have a lot more books. I'm an avid reader. I'm always reading, studying, growing, implementing, yep. testing things. Um, yes. Yeah, fantastic. Well, so talking about that. So your latest book is called uh, Unstoppable Beacon. So tell us about that. So Unstoppable Beacon uh, is all about being a beacon, a beacon of hope, a beacon of you being you. And this actually does actually has a lot to do with marketing. And here, here's why. I've trained lots of people um, all around the world, and we can give people the mechanics of marketing. We can give them the tactics. We can give them the tools. We can be give them the strategy. But the thing that makes the biggest difference is their level of personal power, their essence, their soul, right? And so when somebody is just relying on tactics and tools, and this is totally relevant to marketing and AI, it feels, I don't know, soulless. <laughs> it feels <laughs> dry, right? Um, and so the Unstoppable Beacon is all about like doing the work um, of just really doing your shadow work, doing, getting out of drama, coming back into a place of personal power where you're, you're willing to just to be yourself inside of your marketing. Uh, because when you put out a marketing message, I always tell people uh, the messenger, the frequency of the messenger is always greater than the, the message, right? And a lot of times in the marketplace, we're like, well, what's the message? And we hire all these consultants to really dial in the right message to speak to the right who. And we have, again, tactics and tools, but the frequency of that human being who's actually being that messenger. It is the thing that is the, it is the 80, 20 when it comes to marketing and sales. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, well, that's great. And uh, is it uh, available on Amazon or? Yeah, it's available on Amazon. People can go buy it. One of my good friends, Guy Mezger, he's a former UFC world champion. He wrote the foreword to the book. And uh, yeah, so people can go over to Amazon, go buy the book. It'll be shipped to you and all that. All right. Stuff. Fantastic. Well, that's uh, Unstoppable Beacon. But uh, now let's talk a little bit differently. So, uh, you know, one of the challenges uh, and one of the opportunities, certainly this year is uh, AI and AI tools and uh, potentially how people can or marketers can integrate uh, really at a strategic level, uh, chat GPT and maybe even some other AI powered bots into their community building efforts. Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah. So number one, I think we need to, we need to back up a little bit before we hop into the mechanics of the, the AI and just understand how important community is. I think a lot of people, and I don't, and it could be any business you, we could use community where we're building real relationships and we're nurturing those relationships. I have a little bit of stats here on my notes here that 66% um, of people sh or companies show that having a community actually positively impacted their customer retention. 
And 68% of companies found that having a community generated new leads and 55% of those companies saw that it actually increased sales and customers who are part of their, their community spent 19% more with that company after joining their community. So mm. the first thing to look at is like, well, make a decision. Is, is, is your company going to take building a community serious or is it just going to be like, Ah, uh, yeah, we can get to that strategy one day or, oh, yeah, that's here today, but it's going to be gone tomorrow. See, the one thing that I've learned about humans is we like to be with other humans. <laughs> we like to be with like-minded people. We like to learn from one another. I mean, at the end of the day, we are mammals. We are animals. We like to, we do have a sense of belonging. It is one of the basic human needs of every <laughs> human being on the planet. And so I think one of the biggest opportunities for a company is to number one, make a decision to like leverage a community, go all in on building a community. Now it's easy, I would think like in the expert space, somebody who's selling um, expertise on how to do something, right? But if we think of like in the service-based industry, you could still build a community and I'll make this super practical. Let's say you are an HVAC company. Uh, you could build a community for your customers, right? I, ha I just, a couple of years ago, we spent about, I think $10,000 on a new air conditioning um, system and unit. And I am not a handy guy, right? Now, I grew up in a blue collar family with a bunch of construction guys. They are very handy, but I'm the artistic one of the bunch. Uh, I'm handy in other ways, you know? I'm handy in human psychology and technology and emotional intelligence. I can tear physical things up. Like I could tear the house up, but I couldn't mm -hmm. really put it back together. And so it would help uh, people like me with if that HVAC company was said, hey, I got this community. We drop uh, some tips and tricks on how to care for your air conditioning unit. Do you mind if we just drop you in there? That way you're not having to call us and spend another $500 to have us come out just because you forgot to clean the coils or you forgot to do some basic air filter maintenance or something. People like me, I'd have been like, dude, that'd be amazing. And <laughs> if, if they would have put me into that type of customer experience, this comes back a little bit of my music background and music, when you're creating a show, it's not about just the music. It's about the experience of the show that we're crafting together, that we're living in and as a, a unit, I guess you would say, in that concert experience. The community is very similar. It's like as the leader of the community, what type of experience are we crafting for that community? Um, is it one of seeking to understand and understanding them and giving them content that's really uh, of service to them? So that's the first thing that I would say is to just realize, like, go all in on community make a decision. And uh, yeah, that's what I'd say is the first key. And I'll kind of throw it back to you guy and see if you have any questions or. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, and I appreciate that the, um, uh, you know, community is so important. And, uh, it, and one thing, the best way to get new business, uh, almost regardless of what your what business you're in, but the best way to get new business is through referrals. Yeah. And referrals from your existing customers are like the best, strongest, most valuable uh, leads that you can come across. And if you can use your community to energize them, then that that's a that's a win win win, no question about it. So, uh, and as you were talking, I've got a whole bunch of ideas that uh, came to mind, and I said, "Man, I need to do that." you know, as well, you know, for, for what we're doing. So uh, now the problem though, or maybe it's an opportunity is, uh, so how it is, uh, how do you use AI to help you build these communities or enforce and grow and engage and what have you? Uh, how, how are you doing that? Well, I think a lot, the, one of the biggest bottlenecks for a lot of people is they're like, well, if I, I got to nurture the people. So does that mean I'm going to have to create content for, for this? And, you know, I don't have time to create content. So I've, I've learned, like I've used Bard, I've used ChatGPT. Um, both of those tools have totally helped me cut my content creation time by at least in half, may, mm. and maybe it's safe to say 70%. You know, like if you, I've created content for a long time. I've been creating content for, man, nearly 15 years and in internet years. That's so like, I don't know, 50 years, <laughs> it's like, right? And so it's interesting when I can go into Bard and make a prompt that's like, act as an expert copywriter, um, and a behavioral psychologist and um, a video marketer now write me a, a, vid a YouTube script based upon this title. I think that's the prompt. And then lo and behold, it'll do, 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 do. in a couple of seconds, 
the whole, basically the whole script. And I could even mm. go even more granular with that prompt. I could say something like, act as uh, an expert copywriter or a script writer, act as a script writer, expert copywriter, digital marketer, behavioral psychologist, um, and, and whatever, and create me a video, a YouTube video based upon this title, but in the tone of, and I could insert the tone of my brand. So maybe it's inspiring, rebellious, mm. fun, or maybe it's mm. educational, technical, whatever. So you can start playing around with these prompts to start kind of crafting really a systematic way of thinking about creating content. And, and so if we understand this, well, then it's no, now we don't have to like live in a blank canvas because now we can come into chat GPT, we can come into Bard and we could use all of these things to basically do a lot of the work, at least 50% of the work for us. And if we're struggling with ideas, well, I just don't know what type of content to create. So I need to go hire a consultant to figure out what is the content calendar and what is the content. Okay, cool. By all means, feel free to go hire somebody. I'm not against it. Another option, you come back into Bard, you come back into Chat GTP. Again, you're like, act as a social media marketer, act as a community manager uh, and a content strategist. Now create me a month's worth of content ideas or 30 days worth of content ideas for uh, this who to help them solve this uh, result or this problem to get this specific result. That's the prompt. It's gonna dump out ideas and then you're the leader. You get to check in with yourself to know this would serve, this would serve, this would serve, this would serve. And then take those, plug it into the, the prompt to create the content and then boom. Now all you have to do is start scheduling out that content to nurture mm. your people, right? But this really means that we have to just take a kind of a step back to think through how do I leverage these tools of AI to amplify the brand or or the essence of the brand or the essence of me if, if we're a personal brand. And I think this is where a lot of people are dropping the ball when it comes to AI. Now, if we if we back up before even AI is in the, the question. Let's go back to when mini chat was cool. Let's go back to when we autoresponders and Aweber was a breakthrough piece of technology, right? In the mid 2000s where you had autoresponders. The companies who did well with the technology and who still do well with that technology are the companies and the creators who live in the question of how do I use this tool to amplify the essence of me to be of service? Not not of let me leverage the newest, greatest and strategy to be relevant, not to leverage the newest, greatest and tactic to, um, I don't know, take more from people like you will in the short term. I'm not I mean, I'm not going to sit here and be naive. However, long term, if we're talking about sustainable success, if we're talking about impact, technology has always been an amplification tool, not a savior. It's an amplification of the brand and of the leader. Does this make sense? Oh yeah, in a big way, and uh, and I think you're absolutely right. It's um, uh, it can't be, you know, the core of the brand. Well, maybe there are brands where it could be the core, but it really has to be. Is how can I? I have a brand. I have a personality. How can I use technology? And in this case, AI. And and there's a, you know many other technologies, of course. But how can I use AI? And uh, and Chat GPT or Bard or whatever it happens to be to help me to you know solidify that in the minds of my my target customers and my uh, and my my current customers. Absolutely, yeah, it makes a lot of sense. Awesome, fantastic. Yeah, and I also like the way you talk about developing the prompt, and uh, because that that prompt engineering, so to speak, I think that's the. Uh, you know, the term nowadays uh, is how do you engineer the prompt to get what you what you're really trying to solve? And then just using, you know, AI, I found AI and I think you kind of hinted at that early on. AI to me is is writes things that are grammatically very well written, but they're kind of flat. They're kind yeah. of I don't know what you call it, but they're flat. They don't have whatever it is that you're trying to do, but they do provide a very good input and a very good outline and a very good set of bullets against which you can you can work. And I and I like your point about being able to use the uh, you know AI Bard or whatever to uh, to develop a uh, you know a YouTube script to help you to do whatever it is you're trying to do. I really like that.
Yep. So yeah, thank you for that. Now, um, uh, now that's kind of in the broad sense. How can you use AI though to get really down to maybe even the micro targeting or the personalized and the personalization components that are kind of on the tip of the uh, the tip of the tongue of every marketer that's out there? So there's some of there's some technologies, and I don't know the companies offhand uh, that can start analyzing trends within the community that can even start personalizing the content that's being served to each person. So there's going to be, there may, the opportunity may be now, and it may be not it, not now, but it's very, it, it will be very soon. Where if somebody's going through a community experience, that experience can be custom tailored to their own journey, rather than it being like, rather than it, let's, let's go with this analogy, because this is what's present. Rather than it being like 500 people coming into a church and the, the and the the preacher or the leader is giving a sermon to 500 people, there's going to be the possibility that the 500 people come into the church and as they're sitting inside that community, the preacher is going to be able to speak a message that's completely relevant for every single person that will meet them exactly where they're at while also allowing them to experience their own individual unique journey, while also still guiding the entire 500 on towards a similar um, end result. Does that make sense? Does that mm -hmm. analogy make sense? Yeah. So that's some, the way that some people could use the tools to really create an amazing um, community experience. Yeah, it makes absolute sense. And I think... Um... Uh, and the personalization is to your point, you know, having 500 people in your, your target audience in your church and, uh, uh, each one of them is definitely in a different state of mind and a different economic, social, whatever, uh, and being able to use that to be able to get the message across. That's really valuable for each and every one of those is, is I think where, where technology and certainly technology supported by AI can really get there. Um, I, I still think there, you know, because like I said, AI is a little flat. I think there needs to be a little bit of, you know, human intervention in there and, and what have you, but if you can get there, uh, in a big way, uh, and do it with, with speed, and do it kind of at scale and plus still have that human non-flat kind of message come out. I think that's uh, that's where the, the the market is definitely going. No question about it. Totally agree. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So now with community um, and uh, so how do you see community dynamics changing now in, I'll call it the era of uh, of AI? How do you see that unfolding here? I am finding more and more people are hungry for for realness, like relevant realness, right? Like there's, 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 it's so easy to consume content. Um, I think a lot of people are looking at content as, as a quantity game rather than a quality game. Uh, and so I, and I was, I was listening to something the other day and people were talking about how we live in the information age and somebody said, well, in their information age died a long, long time ago. What, what the marketplace is hungry for today is actual wisdom, like real, mm. real truthful wisdom. Right. And so I think sometimes the, the business market is, is they're looking over here and, and the market and all of the noise is, I mean, there, there is their focus, but they have to, if we're going to succeed in this age, we have to throw that away. And this is what I talked about in Unstoppable Beacon and actually come home to, to us being the soul in control and communing with something beyond us and, and living in that question, you know, with all of these tools and all of these paths of marketing at our disposal, they all work, right? The real question is, is which one are we called to walk out based upon our own uniqueness, our own wisdom, our own creativity, which requires us to put on a bunch of blinders. And just because some marketer or some business or some guru or whatever is, is saying, well, this is, this is the savior of all businesses. <laughs> Maybe it's, it's a path and people are going to go flock to that. But I'm seeing time and time again, it's coming back to just basic timeless principles of business, which is like care about people, solve their problems, mm -hmm. 
do what you say you're going to do, you know, treat them with respect and kindness, be of service. And if, if you will, if you'll build a business based upon these principles and you just use the tools to, to amplify these principles, I have never seen a business lose. Mm. I've no, only seen them lose yeah. when they get distracted and all of the nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. And you are, you're so right. Uh, you know, there's that shiny little object over there, whatever it is. And, uh, but you know, I, to your point though, the, the core business, uh, I don't know what, you know, tenets that really make any business successful, uh, will never go away. I, I mean, I can't, well, maybe they will, maybe if, if you have a bot selling to another bot or something like that, but if you are individual selling to an individual, if you want to be a brand that means something to individuals, then you're really an individual selling to an individual and you have to act that way. And, um, uh, and, and that'll, that, that'll probably never go away. I can't imagine it going away, but you know, I, I can only see towards the end of this week, maybe the end of the month, maybe the end of the year. Who knows what will happen in 10 or 20 or 50 years? Uh, so, uh, yeah, absolutely. So now um, uh, there's this concept of uh, AI powered bots that might be able to uh, to help things out. What have you uh, what have you learned? Uh, what have you done? What have you what can you tell us about that? We've talked a little bit about, you know, the chat GPT. We've talked about Bard. Uh, so this is how I've, I've found them to help people out. And you can use them in customer ser service. There's some mm. customer service bots that are doing really well. That is anything that's just a repetitive task over and over and over again. It's very efficient because, again, people are just like, I have this problem. What's the solution? And so you could use those chat bots to be like, here's a solution. And they're like, oh, thank you so much. And it's very quick and it's very efficient. Right. So this is where it comes back to the best way to use some of these things is like, what is a specific problem that your people are having? And then can you use the technology to help them solve that problem extremely quickly? Right. So that's the, the main thing that I'm seeing how to use kind of chat bots. Now, the thing I would say, though, and we've kind of touched on this, I think. Is that I do not think that chat bots will ever be able to replace and give us humans anyway a sense of belonging. And so any company who's willing to really live in this question of like, how do I give my customers a sense of belonging? How do I help my customers feel like, I didn't say think like, I said feel like, I'm using that word specifically. How do I help my customer feel like I actually genuinely care? And not, not as a tactic, but just as a soul to another soul how can I genuinely help all of the people that we feel called to serve and that we are serving, that they feel seen, heard, and appreciated by us? Because yes, I, on one side, they are giving them, they are giving me their hard earned money. Thank you. And on the other side, they're saying your service or your product is worth more to me, the customer, than my money. So they give you the money and they're like, thank you for this product. You just solved a, a need of mine. And so there's there's value exchange. And so I don't ever foresee a chat bot, as long as there's humans, um, replacing this sense of genuine belonging that there's going to be something in us that's going to long for. I could take this into very extreme possibilities if you want to go there because I've had these conversations. And at the end of the day, I still think it's going to come back that there's something within us that we are constantly asking the question, what is the purpose of life? What is the meaning of life? Mm -hmm. And how do I connect with people? And at some point, no matter how many lifetimes we play this out, at some point, <laughs> we come home to answering that question. Yeah, uh, no, absolutely. And um, I mean, well, that gets into philosophical stuff, but, uh, you know, absolutely. So, you know, one thing you brought up, though, which uh, as you were talking, uh, I was thinking about um, if you want to personalize, let's say the chat, the chat experience, not the chat bot experience, but the chat, the there's a lot of people that and myself included quite often I go in there. I just want a fast answer. Yeah. And, um, you know, so there in most cases, I'm willing to take the risk to talk to a chat bot because it'll probably get me the answer pretty quickly. So on the other hand, though, uh, so many experiences, 
I found where I know immediately that the chat bot is not going to get me the answer. And so, you know, it would almost seem like you could, to personalize the experience, you could say, listen, um, I just want a fast answer. You know, give me the chat bot. I'm okay with that. As opposed to, you know, nowadays, you got to go through the chat bot, you got to answer five questions, and you just hit other, 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 other. And then finally, the chat bot realizes, hey, I can't answer it. Well, because I've figured out how to, you know, to, to circumvent the chat bot to say, would you like to speak with an agent now? Well, yes, I wanted to speak to them five minutes ago, but I, this was the only way I could get through. So if they would ask somehow that question up, you know, ahead of time to personalize it, I'd be much, I, I'm okay with waiting five minutes. I just don't want to have to go through the other, 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 no, 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 to be able to five, you know, finally after five minutes to get to the question, do you want to speak with an agent? I can't answer your questions, you know? Yep. So, uh, you know, it would seem like uh, that something like that would uh, uh, personalize the chatbot, provide the chatbot actually more and uh, more value to that person that's coming in. So let me ask you a question because you bring up a valid point. <clears throat> Whose responsibility is it to think through that customer experience? Is it the chatbot's responsibility? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good question. No, absolutely not. Well, at a top level, it's marketing, which is me or and right. and you, uh, and uh, you know, absolutely, it's a first of all, it's a human. I think maybe that's where you're going. It's definitely right, a human. That's where I'm going. It ain't yeah. no chatbot. <laughs> and it's also a it's a human who cares, right? Yeah, right, right, right. I was right. talking with a with a an owner of a soft a software company just a couple of days ago this week. Uh, and he was looking at bringing me on as a, as a consultant and is living in the question of how do we make the best customer experience possible? Yeah. And, and that requires a, a human. Uh, and I mean, e even if I think through this, it's we fast forward 10 years from now, could AI have the possibility to think through the customer experience faster and find some holes that I, I wouldn't be able to see potentially, potentially, however, there's still going to have to be a human who's going to live beyond that. That's not that the AI is not going to be able to replace. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's willing to kind of feel into it and look in the data and live in this world of possibilities and creativity to to again come from a place of caring and compassion while also analyzing the data and the trends. Yeah. To, Include those worlds together to create the best customer experience. And I do truly believe this. The companies that create the best company yeah. user experience win all day, every day. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. And uh, and user experience is not just online. It's the, the whole cloud of user okay. experience, whether it's online or in store or on the phone or whatever it is, whether it's B2B with a salesperson, B2C with something else, it's uh, it's that whole cloud of of user experience that uh, and user experience doesn't start doesn't stop with the purchase. It oh. finishes with the satisfaction and potentially, you know, and you hopeful uh, and you hope that you'll get a review or something like that out of it. Yes. Now, somebody's going to hear what we're talking about right now, and they're like, they're going to turn it into a tactic. What is the five steps to be able to create <laughs> a customer service experience? Sounds is, like a number one bestseller book. Of course it is. What is the chat prompt to create the best customer experience for the so-and-so? Okay, I get it. But the reality is, is we don't know. And this is where I think a lot of companies go wrong is they want the fast and easy solution rather than understanding business is art a little bit. Yes, there's a bunch of science, but it's also art and it's creativity means, which means there's no, mm. there's no rules. There are rules, but there's also no rules. Like there's rules in art for composition and color, but there's also no, no rules, uh, right? But we can leverage the rules to create art, which great art dances this paradox between chaos and order. Great art captures the essence of both of those, right? If you have too much chaos, you're like, eh. if you have too much order, you're like, it's boring. Great art captures the both. Businesses are the same way. So that means there's going to have to be a human who's willing to kind of feel their way and let that be their artistry to then craft that amazing experience in using AI to do so efficiently. Yeah, no, I, I know exactly. Now you brought up data. Uh, data is a four letter word like holy data. Yes. <laughs> and uh, data, you too, you know, so uh, 
Um, but anyway, let's talk about data-driven uh, decision-making and uh, AI. And now we've, we've kind of been talking about chatbots, but there's uh, other area, uh, certainly. So uh, tell us a little bit about that and certainly how you can use that data for, you know, communities and making sure that your communities and your and your influencers and leaders in the communities are really uh, driving and striving for uh, continuous improvement. Yeah, I was talking with uh, a guy, a good friend of mine, his name is Abe Nadimi, and he runs a, a company called MindShift. They're, they're an agency and they do RevOps um, for, for large corporations and large companies. And so RevOps is like basically this concept, if people have never heard of, of RevOps, where they take all of the silos mm -hmm. and they get communicating uh, together and and the companies who actually really take RevOps um seriously, they even start creating a role whose responsibility is basically to ensure uh, all of the data and all of the communications are being um, thought through to cr ultimately create the best customer journey, the best customer experience from the very first touch point to fulfillment and and beyond. Right now, if we look back, if we go back back in time go back to the 60s, we go back to the 50s, we go back to the 30s, um, 70s, you would have these silos and they didn't talk to one another. And each silo would have their own data points, whether it was written or whatever. But the opportunity that we have today is communication is being more brought this way. But the challenge is, is getting the data also brought in. Because typically, if if you're anything like me and a lot of entrepreneurs are like, ah, data, I mean, it's marketing, it sells, it's fulfillment. <laughs> what do I, what, I have a CRM, <laughs> I, I have an email list. What, what data are you talking about? And so it's kind of a different paradigm shift to really make a decision uh, on really talking about the data and making that data important and really taking it on to start bringing that data and collecting that data and then organizing that data. And yeah, you could, we could use, um, chat bots, we could use AI tools to start pulling in that data. Uh, one of uh, one of my uh, guys, Chris Kiefer, he's also a, a client of Social Glow. Uh, he created a whole software system that helped painters pull all of their data into place mm. um, so they could start making the best decisions um, with that data. And so I don't have a very specific, I know this is kind of high level, I don't have a specific because I'm not a data expert by any means. Um, but it's just kind of number one, making a decision, the importance of data. Number two, living in the question, how do you start pulling in that data, organizing that data? And then number three, how do you start using the tools at your disposal who can go through that data quicker than a, a human can to start, you know, to analyze it, to then start making strategic decisions to ultimately disinform how to create that best customer experience. Yeah, absolutely. And the, uh, I mean, that's what we do. Uh, and it's, it is surprising whether you're a big multi-billion dollar company or a smaller, you know, multi-million dollar company. Uh, we, uh, that's our business is we can provide strategic and tactical value out of that data. And to your point, um, you know, the, uh, you, ignoring the data, ignoring the structure of the data, and then ignoring the analytics that can be done on that is definitely a strategic disadvantage because there is no question that the competition is doing is using their data to uh, to try and beat you. So uh, absolutely. Um, all right. Well, we're about uh, to the end here. Um, and uh, so, what do you see as kind of the next new normal uh, in marketing and community and in AI? What do you kind of see now as really the uh, the the next new normal? I think the, the at least the next opportunity, and I've kind of been talking about this, um, is this kind of coming into a whole, I'm calling it like the age of service is, I guess is what I would call it. For so long, businesses have been kind of been stuck in like this age of, of greed. Like and you can look at big pharma, you can look at um, the, the food industry where it literally is, we're going to put profits over people. And it's, it's running its course and it has been running its course. And since the since COVID came, uh, came in, and I made a whole podcast episode about this in March of 2020. And people can still go listen to it on YouTube or my website or, or wherever. And I talked about how the gift of COVID is it was going to expose the shadows of humanity and you would either take on the responsibility to lean into your shadow, extract the gift and evolve, 
or you'll you'll literally die and you're going to just go like that's it's going to happen there's no way around it and i think here we are now four years past the pandemic there's enough evidence that you if you have eyes to see and ears to hear to start seeing that truth is not it's not being hidden like it's it's coming to the surface right i um, mean so i really feel like we're starting to see more and more companies who are going to start like seeing their greed has got to a point where it serves them. It's gotten us to a place as a, as a whole globe where we have the highest per capita. It's a, I mean, an amazing time to be alive. It really, really is. I know there's a lot of nonsense and there's a lot of drama, but there's also so many amazing things happening. Um, If you'll just turn off the media, there's amazing people, <laughs> amazing opportunities. There's lots of amazing people doing amazing things. But moving forward, the opportunity and what's going to be is this, it's going to be people, it's going to be companies who are doing and growing from a place of service, not from a place of like, I just got to get more material goods to get better and bigger and more power, and more greed that served us. And now it's time to, to ascend and aspire beyond that. Yeah, fantastic. I think, I think you're so much, you're so right. Um, I mean, greed will always be there, uh, but can you temper it with? you know, with something that's a little bit more valuable and, uh, you know, and, and more legacy, maybe, I don't know what the right thing is, but certainly to your point services there. Um, uh, so one last question before we close, uh, and that is uh, what advice would you give an up and coming new marketer? Oh man, great question. What advice would I give an up and coming new marketer? Um, I would say find a group of people that you genuinely care about. Find a, a group of people or choose a group of people that you feel genuinely called to serve. And then use the tools at your disposal to go serve them. If you will do that, I promise you, you'll be able to get a job who uh, has a company that wants to serve those people. You're going to gain the skill sets to become a brilliant marketer, which just means you're building relationships and shipping a message into the world consistently. Um, and you'll have plenty of results where you'll never have to like beg for a job or work. That's what I would say. Yeah, fantastic. Well, I think you're so right on that. And, uh, uh, and those relationships will pay off years and years to come, uh, regardless of what happens is you can leverage those relationships as you want to change your career or move your career or whatever. Those relationships will, uh, it's kind of like the, uh, the knowledge of the crowd that can really help out. And if they're the right people that you chose, then you'll be able to, uh, you know, really leverage that for your future. Uh, AJ, thank you so much. Uh, wonderful. Um, you know, you gave me a lot of interesting ideas on uh, some things that I can do moving forward. Uh, tell us one more uh, time your book. Uh, tell us what your book is and and then also how people can reach out to you. Yeah. So if you want to go buy my book, just go to Amazon. It's called Unstoppable Beacon. It's all about how to maintain your center in the chaos unlock your potential and find freedom in life and business. You can just grab it on Amazon. I think it's like nine bucks or something like that. If you want to learn more about me, just go over to AJ Amix, AJAMYX.com. Um, once you get there, you can also sign up for what I call the stress stack. Uh, it's completely free and it'll help you reduce your stress by like 30% mm -hmm. or more. So feel free to go over to AJAMYX.com and grab that. All right. Fantastic. Well, I, I'll definitely do that. It would be nice to get rid of my uh, stress. So that is AJAMYX.com, AJ Amix. And uh, so to the audience, please stay tuned for other videos in this series of the backstory on marketing and AI. And if you get a chance, please go to marketingmachine.prorelevant.com and you can download a uh, the first chapter of my book, uh, The uh, Post-COVID Marketing Machine. Thanks so much, uh, AJ, and uh, look forward maybe speaking in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.